Another advantage of working with an orthogonal basis is that the coordinates of a vector with respect to such a basis are easy to compute. And as the following theorem demonstrates, there is a nice formula to find such coordinates. So this theorem tells us the following. We want to let the set of vectors, vector v sub 1 through vector v sub k, be an orthogonal basis for a subspace w of Rn, and we want to let vector w be any vector our little hearts desire in the subspace w. Then the unique scalars c sub 1 through c sub k, such that vector w is equal to the linear combination of these vectors v sub 1 through v sub k, are given by the formula c sub i is equal to the ratio of vector w dotted with vector v sub i by the dot product of vector v sub i with itself, for i is equal to 1 through k. So let's go ahead and prove this theorem to verify the formula for these coordinates. So we want to let w be a subspace of Rn, and we want to let b be equal to the set of vectors v sub 1 through v sub k, be an orthogonal basis for the subspace w. Then by a previously established theorem, we know that for all vector w in the subspace w, there is exactly one way to write vector w as a linear combination of the basis vectors. So our goal here is to show that the arbitrary scalar c sub i is equal to the ratio of vector w dotted with the arbitrary vector v sub i divided by the dot product of vector v sub i with itself. And now this is to hold true for all i being equal to 1 through k. So in order to establish this formula, let's take the dot product of vector w with the arbitrary vector v sub i. Now, we can rewrite this by distributing the arbitrary vector v sub i through to each term in the linear combination, and then rewriting this as a linear combination of the dot product of all the vectors in the set multiplied by the arbitrary vector v sub i. Now, since the set of vectors v sub 1 through v sub k is an orthogonal set, we know that all of the dot products in the above equation are zero, with the exception of vector v sub i dotted with itself. So we can use this to rewrite this as vector w dotted with vector v sub i being equal to the arbitrary scalar c sub i multiplied by the dot product of vector v sub i with itself. Now, since vector v sub i is a non-zero vector in Rn, we know that vector v sub i cannot be equal to the zero vector, which implies that the dot product of vector v sub i with itself is not equal to zero. So since the dot product of vector v sub i with itself is not equal to zero, we can divide both sides of this equation by the dot product of vector v sub i with itself which allows us to attain the formula c sub i is equal to the dot product of vector w with vector v sub i divided by the dot product of vector v sub i with itself. And since c sub i is an arbitrary scalar, this is going to hold true for all i being equal to 1 through k, which completes our proof. Woohoo!